All right, on behalf of Brad Moran and myself, we'd like to thank you, Dr. Henninger, for having us out here. We've been working for the last couple of weeks to uh, um, on this antiviral model, and basically what we've been trying to do is um, minimize the administration of an antiviral drug over the course of 10 years uh, through a um, series of controllers and things like that. So without further ado, we'll let Marita talk about that. All right, so a brief overview of our presentation. We'll first go over the background and kind of the model that we based our controller and optimizer off, and then we'll talk about our state space model, which proved the system to be unstable, and then we'll go over the controller and the optimizer that we developed. Um, so first off, a little bit of background. Uh, like Matt said, we wanted to keep the virus count below an acceptable level while minimizing the use of antiviral, and we use these equations um, for the healthy cells, infected cells, viral cells, and then the antiviral count. And as you can see, there's a series of rates here associated <coughs> with these equations, but we wanted to draw your attention to the last one that we added, which is the rate of antiviral consumed by the liver. And as you can see, that's included in the last term of that last equation for antiviral. And we figured this would produce a more accurate uh, system to take that into account. Um, a little bit about state space. We used those previous equations, and we linearized them and put them in a state uh, state space form and then develop this transfer function. Um, as you can see from the graph, this is unstable and, and we confirm that um, by taking finding the eigenvalues. We noticed that we had a positive eigenvalue, which meant that the system was unstable. And it's also fourth order, which means that we couldn't uh, fit it using a first order plus dead time model. So instead of using the state space model and like the first principles method, we went kind of more of an empirical route. Um, we just did a step test on the AVN uh, using those previous models to get uh, the process constants, as you can see there, for the first order plus dead time. Um, and then we used those, used the IMC correlations that were built in to Loop Pro to get the PI tuning constants. We actually did use, uh, did try the PID tuning constants as well, but the derivative term didn't really do anything for the system, so we just left it off because um, it's easier to run a PI uh, controller. So those are the initial constants that we got there, 1.55 uh, for KC, a negative 1.55 for KC, and 2.53 times 10 negative fourth uh, for tau i. As we put that into the model though and, and the controller went, it was just a little bit aggressive and it took the antiviral in negative when you can't have a negative amount. So then we tried tuning it around a little bit and um, you can see in the chart on the bottom left, there's three values of tau i that we tried and they all produced a controller that worked fairly well. And so now it's kind of the second objective is to minimize the amount of uh, AV or the antiviral that's going to be used. And so we had two different set points, uh, either 10 or 20. Both were kind of acceptable limits, we thought, but we wanted to minimize that amount. And so we integrated under each curve, uh, and you can see those values there below. And we see that the, um, the, highest, <coughs> the highest tau i, so the 8.53 times 10 negative third uh, for tau i, and the set point of 10 resulted in the lowest amount of antiviral used for the, the PI controller. So what we tried to do after that was basically verify how acceptable our PI mm -hmm. controller was. So we decided to take this model through an optimizer. And you can see the, mo the mo minimize equation there. We decided that we wanted to minimize over the course of 10 years the, because of the, the expensive nature of it, the minimize the amount of antiviral drug administered. So what we did is we put it through this uh, optimizer to minimize that. There were several parameters such as um, initial value and uh, set point and things like that. We, after kind of toggling with a lot of different of those values, we noticed that set point was really the only thing that um, manipulated the curve. Everything else kind of started an arbitrary value and went through and performed the exact same, produced the same um, integration values. So. Um, we noticed on our other controller that the set point of 10 produced the biggest value, so we wanted to, or the smallest value, so we compared the set points of 10 viral count uh, to 20, and it verified what our PI controller had told us, that the set point of 10 produces the lo lowest amount of um, antiviral drug needed to be administered. Um, this was a little bit lower, but it was within about 13% of what our PI controller um, was predicting and so we decided that, that was a pretty good pretty good representation of, of the behavior of that system. So do you have any questions? <coughs>